we start interpreting Uranus in the houses? We take the meaning of Uranus and the meaning of the house in question, and we bring them together. We consider how the drive of Uranus is likely to express itself in the area of life associated with the house. Let's start with the first quadrant of the chart, houses one, two, and three. Remember, the key words for Uranus are revolution, disruption, sudden change, individuation, deconditioning, activism, and liberation. Now, let's combine these words with the concepts linked to the first house. Start with persona or mask. The first house is the way you present yourself to the world. When Uranus is here, you find that the native embodies a revolutionary spirit. They come off as rebellious and activistic. Uranus represents the future, the cutting edge, attitudes outside the norm. So it's difficult for a person with Uranus in the first not to be controversial in a haphazard way. On the darker side, we find someone who's disruptive and even erratic. There's often a jerking quality to the way this person moves, a suddenness to their mannerisms, as well as an alert or sometimes frazzled quality. This placement appears independent and self-reliant, the type who seems able to operate alone just fine. When it comes to the first house, we also have to consider the most important angle in the chart, the ascendant. The ascendant has long been known as the primary path by which the sun reaches its destiny. If close to this line, Uranus profoundly colors the way the native approaches life. In other words, the planet of invention and liberation is the lens through which the native looks at the world. Deconditioning, being unique, thinking free, and bucking the system are all paths to the sun's destiny. They'll see life as big, social, unpredictable, and surprising. I've noticed that a set of Uranian ethics is very important to this placement. How are Uranus's ethics different from those of other planets? Well, its ethics are based in equality. Uranus rising wants a perfect world in which all humans are equal. This placement sees hierarchies everywhere and generally disapproves of any system where one person is considered more valuable than another based solely on station in life. In any sign, reactions to inequality tend to be surprising to both the native and the people around them. Now, this is because Uranus is reactive by nature. This is why it's associated with disruptions and sudden change. Uranus in the first or conjunct the ascendant makes life a bumpy ride, but there's a concern ultimately for becoming a truly authentic individual. In youth, this placement tends to focus on breaking rules in everyone's face. As it matures, you see more in the way of refreshing ideas and constant reinvention of the self. What if Uranus is conjunct the Ascendant but in the 12th house? 
Anything in the twelfth is hidden, unconscious, and something the native will sacrifice a lot for. This placement tends to hide their quirkiness, their metaphysical interests, and the extremes of their ideas. At least this is true in the beginning of life, or when they're in a less accepting environment. A 12th house Uranus will also put an internal and spiritual spin on their quest for freedom. The unconscious in this case will be quite active. The second house is about money, possessions, the internal currency that motivates you and your self-value. So let's apply Uranus's keywords to these aspects of life. When Uranus is in the second, you'll usually find an erratic way of making money. Rather than a stable weekly paycheck, they might get commissions or there may be multiple streams of onshore income. You often find entrepreneurs with this placement because the autonomous nature of the planet comes out. Of all the planets in the second, Uranus is most likely to live on a shoestring for the sake of freedom. Money for them isn't related to prestige or comfort as much as it is a symbol of their independence. The disruptive energy of this planet usually manifests, at least in youth, as now you have it, now you don't. Or as they say in northern New Mexico, sometimes you have the chicken and sometimes you just have the feathers. <laughs> Unusual or innovative sources of income are common along with strange investments. This placement also tends to be drawn to unusual possessions and minimalism. The best quote I ever heard from a Uranus in the second was, I don't like possessions because you own them, but they own you. Possessions do restrict freedom of movement. So Uranus in the second regularly goes through their stuff and gets rid of the crap that's weighing them down. I don't care about money. I'm giving everything away. I don't want to own much. I'd rather have my time than a fat paycheck. All of these things are a rebellious attitude in Western society. Given the humanitarian nature of Uranus, second house people may have socialist leanings, perhaps thinking we're all members of the same race and we should take care of each other. The poor getting taken for a ride by the rich is something that this placement finds distasteful for sure. Money and possessions are just a means to an end for them. Of course, an unstable personality, an underdeveloped son with Uranus in the second can end up with a badly managed and chaotic financial life. That's due to various kinds of gambling or get rich quick schemes but a lack of reliability and consistency is always the soft white underbelly of this planet. But that's because money isn't just about money. It symbolizes an individual's ability to manage their desires and think ahead. Strange or intuition-based investments and ethical investments are often found with this placement as well. And the self-value of the native will be bound up in being individual. The most original, most free-thinking aspects of the self will be the most valued. 
Their deepest currency is always freedom. If they can make a living doing something that only they can offer, they're happy. This placement is drawn to creative work environments and exciting, even futuristic fields. In the third house, Uranus brings revolution and innovation to third house matters. Exactly what are third house matters? To begin with, the third has to do with communication, speaking, and writing. This placement can reflect a person who speaks in an eccentric way. Maybe they blurt things out. Maybe they have a shockingly thick accent. Maybe they speak quickly. Wherever Uranus is, we find an erratic energy. And in communication, this is no different. Uranus here tends to be a fast learner and picks up information quickly through intuition more than logic. Uranus in the third is the one in the classroom that jumps ahead and draws conclusions before the rest of the class. This placement is drawn to wide topics and odd subcultures. I was asked recently if Uranus here makes someone naturally good at languages. I don't think so. Languages are highly structured. The grammar and the rules are Saturnine, not Uranian. However, Uranus in the third may have an intuitive feel for all learning. This placement is also known for surprising explosions of speech and eureka moments. Uranus works in a flash. After all, it's associated with lightning itself. This placement usually thinks about the ethics of communication and tends to prize both honesty and their ability to remain open to all ideas. Often there's a wit and a wry way of putting things. They always seem to have an innovative way to look at problems. Will they say unusual and disconcerting things? Probably. Uranus's quirkiness really comes out in this house. Mark Zuckerberg has this placement. It's hard to watch him speak and not think about his bizarre style. Uranus's strange robotic ways come through in his case. Einstein was another free thinker who rode the razor's edge when it came to reality itself and yet was rumored to have Asperger's or at least an extreme form of absent-mindedness mixed with genius. Nelson Mandela was another Uranus in the third who upset the system and made social progress by the things he said, which is a special love of this placement. Now, let's not forget this is the house of siblings. In speaking to clients, I found that there's often something chaotic or unusual about one of the siblings that drew a lot of the family attention in the early years. And it's common for the native to have moved around a lot, been somehow transient, or been cared for by extended family. Or perhaps they just had an unconventional experience in school. There's also usually a kind of thrill-seeking that goes along with this placement because Uranus has a penchant for excitement and extremes. So there you have it, three different placements of Uranus. You can see it's the same planet with the same key features. It actually has the same drives no matter where it is. It's just squeezed and shaped and colored 
by the concerns of the house you find it in. Thank you for watching Secrets from an Astrologer's Desk, Uranus in the First Quadrant. Next is all the ways you can get in touch for a birth chart reading and full astrological services. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uranus in the second quadrant is next.